Hey everybody, Adam at Digital Goja. The new Altura Photo AP305 flash and trigger set has a lot of great features. And today we're gonna go step by step on how to get the most from it. Together, this flash and transmitter are a perfect pair to have in your kit for fast and versatile lighting options. The AP305 is available for Canon, Nikon, and Sony, and its built-in 2.4 gigahertz transceiver and high-speed sync capabilities sets this new series apart from previous Altura Photo TTL flashes. These new flashes have a lot of features, so we've included time markers listed in the description box below. Feel free to skip ahead if you're looking for something specific. You can also download the manual on Altura Photo's website for more information. Let's begin by taking a look at the flash's built-in features. The AP305 features a bounce swivel head, which gives your photo a softer, more diffused light. The head tilts from minus seven to 90 degrees and has a total rotation of 270 degrees. The automatic zoom has a range from 24 to 105 millimeters, but when you extend the wide angle panel, it widens the coverage to 14 millimeters. It also features a catch light card, which helps reflect light from the flash, adding more life to your subject's eyes. Let's put some batteries in, power it up, and get to it. The AP305 flash has three modes. Pressing the mode button allows you to toggle through each mode. TTL, which stands for through the lens, M for manual, and multi for stroboscopic mode. Setting the flash to manual allows you to choose a specific power setting and just rotate the rear control dial clockwise or counterclockwise to increase or decrease the flash intensity. The AP305 flash has eight power levels with third step increments. You can adjust the power output of the flash from one over one full power to one 128th, the lowest power setting. Multi-stroboscopic mode is extremely fun to play with for interesting photos. This mode allows you to capture a series of images of your subject in motion within the same photo. To access the multi-mode, press mode button until multi appears on the display. The flash power is displayed on the left side of the screen and to the right you will see the flash count and flash frequency represented in Hertz. Press set and rotate the command wheel to make changes to the flash frequency. Once you select the frequency, press set to choose the number of flashes. Since the multi-stroboscopic mode only works in manual mode, you will have to select the shutter speed that works and to calculate the approximate shutter speed needed, divide the number of flashes into the flash frequency. Keep in mind that experimentation is key. Also, make sure to give the flash a rest for at least 15 minutes after firing the flash in the stroboscopic mode 10 times in succession or it will shut down automatically to prevent overheating. With TTL, your flash and camera calculate the proper exposure in an instant. When the Altura Photo AP305 is set to TTL, you have more creative lighting options in your toolkit. You have flash exposure compensation, high speed sync, and rear or second curtain sync to work with. Flash exposure compensation is great for fine tuning the automatic settings of your flash by dialing in the amount of compensation needed from plus three to minus three. Now to activate FEC in TTL mode, hit the set button and rotate the command dial. Rotating to the left decreases the overall flash exposure and rotating to the right increases it. Press set to make your selection. In shots where there's a lot of movement or action and distance of the subjects keep changing, there isn't a lot of time to think about exposure. TTL and FEC used together can do most of the thinking for you. The AP305 flash features HSS mode or what's known as high speed sync. With this, you can synchronize your flash beyond your camera's normal synchronization speed. To access HSS, press the sync button and the symbol with the lightning bolt and a lowercase h will appear. This feature is only available in manual and TTL modes. The flash also features a bunch of custom functions. You can adjust its standby mode, AF assist beam, and backlit display. Now to conserve battery power, the flash will automatically go into power save mode when inactive for approximately 90 seconds when attached to the camera and 60 minutes when set as a receiver flash. It's recommended to deactivate the standby mode in custom settings when using the flash off camera. 
The autofocus assist beam helps the camera focus in poor lighting conditions, but sometimes it can be distracting to your subject, so it can be helpful to turn it off. Remember, this feature is only compatible with DSLR cameras. The LCD's backlit display makes it possible to read the info on the panel when lighting is poor. The custom setting allows you to either deactivate the backlit display, have it always on, or set it on a 10 second timer. To access your flash's custom settings, press and hold the zoom button for two seconds. Rotate the control dial to toggle through the different features and press the set button to make changes to any one of the different custom settings. ST is the auto sleep or standby menu. AF refers to the AF assist beam and BL is for backlighting control. In addition, there's also a custom ID menu selection for private channels when using two or more AP305 flash units. This allows you to configure the wireless subchannels on your AP305 flash. This is off by default, but you can select a subchannel between 1 and 99. So we just discussed some great features, but what's really exciting is that the Altura Photo AP305 can be used as either a sender or as a receiver. This will take your flash photography to the next level. Its built-in 2.4 gigahertz transceiver allows you to configure a multi off-camera lighting setup and this combination allows you to shoot in either TTL or manual modes. You can also set your receiver flash in a high-speed sync mode. The flash on your camera will be set as the sender and the one off-camera, the receiver. To set the flash as a sender, press and hold the sync button for two seconds. Once you see the antenna symbol flashing, rotate the wheel until you see an M symbol. Press the set button to make your selection. The flash will display the wireless channel to the right and the AP305 has 16 selectable channels. By default, your flash will be set to channel one. To change the wireless channel, press and hold the slave button for two seconds. Once the channel blinks, rotate the control wheel and scroll through channels 1 through 16 and hit set to make your selection. Keep in mind that this will be the channel used for all flashes in your multi-light setup. For additional control, the AP305 flash allows you to set up multiple flashes in three flash groups A, B, or C, up to eight flashes per group. This allows you to independently control the flash mode and output per group. The flash on camera set as the sender is assigned to group A for the Canon version and group M for Sony and Nikon. The sender flash can be set to either TTL, manual, or no flash. When no flash is selected, the sender will not emit a flash and will have no overall effect on your flash exposure. If you're working with the Canon version, set your receiving flashes to groups B or C when you want to deactivate the sender flash. Even though the flash doesn't fire, it will still send the radio signal to trigger the off-camera AP305 flash. If the sender flash is set to either TTL or M mode, it will influence the overall exposure and send the radio signal to trigger the off-camera flash. To change the intensity or mode of your off-camera flash, press the slave button and choose the grouping you would like to adjust. Each flash used off-camera can be set to either TTL or manual. To activate your sender or receiver into the high-speed sync mode, tap the sync button once. Now, let's set up your receiver flash. Once the unit is on, press and hold the sync button for two seconds, and rotate the wheel until you see an S symbol. Press the set button to make your selection. The flash will display the wireless channel to the right, Press and hold the slave button for two seconds and make sure to select the same channel found on the sender flash. If the channels do not match, the receiver flash will not work off camera. Once you've selected the channel, set the flash to one of the three groups by tapping the slave button. The flash mode and intensity for the flash is controlled by the flash on the camera. To make sure this flash doesn't go into standby mode, deactivate the auto sleep function in the custom setting menu. If you have more than two AP305 flash units, repeat the steps on how to set up your AP305 flash as a receiver. Remember that each flash must be set to the same channel, but you can assign a different group for each flash. For example, if you purchased four AP305 flashes, one flash will be attached to the camera and used as the trigger, and the other three will be set as the receiving flashes. You can assign all three flashes to one group, 
or you can have one for either group, or you can have one in group A and the other two in either groups B or C. Now let's look at Altura Photo's trigger set, which includes the AP305 flash and the RT305 shoe mount flash transmitter. Both are designed to communicate with each other on its dedicated 2.4 gigahertz wireless radio system. And the benefit of this radio system over the traditional optical sender receiver systems is that you have longer working distances. You don't have to worry about your sender and flash in direct line of sight. And with 16 independent channels, you don't have to worry about other flashes triggering your receiving flashes. The only thing to keep in mind when using this kit is to make sure that both the camera and flash are set to manual. Now, since this is a manual trigger set, high speed sync is not possible. So make sure that the shutter speed doesn't exceed the camera's flash synchronization speed. And the RT305 flash transmitter has a maximum shutter sync speed of 1 250th of a second. Let's look at the RT305. On the top right, you'll find the dial to switch between groups. And although you see groups A through F and 1 through 9, only groups A, B, and C are selectable when paired with the AP305 flash. Setting the dial to either one of the three groups will allow you to either change the intensity or deactivate your AP305 flash. To change the flash intensity, use the plus or minus buttons found on the bottom of the trigger. The most important setting on your RT305 flash trigger are the channel switches. Now this allows the RT305 to communicate with the AP305 flash. By default, all four channel switches will be in the down position, signifying that it's set for channel one. For additional information on setting the channels, please refer to your flash trigger user manual. To install the transmitter onto the hot shoe, make sure that the display faces you. If you install the RT305 in the opposite direction, it won't make proper connection. Now it's time to set up your AP305 as a receiver flash. Make sure to change the flash mode to manual. This must be done on the flash itself. Once you've done that and made sure the channel matches, you can press the test button on the RT305 to confirm connectivity. If you select a group A on your receiving flash, choose group A on the RT305 and set the appropriate power levels. The buttons for buzz and lamp will not have any effect when paired with the AP305 flash. Another quick and easy way to fire the AP305 off camera is to use its S1 and S2 optical sensing modes. This lets you trigger your AP305 flash with your built-in pop-up flash or any shoe mount style flash. To access these modes, set the AP305 flash to manual using the mode button and then choose S1 or S2 by tapping the slave button. If the pop-up flash is set to automatic, make sure to set the AP305 to S2, otherwise go with S1. It's also critical to position your flashes so that the optical sensor is in line of sight with no obstructions. You're now ready for off-camera flash photography using either Altura Photo's AP305 and RT305 flash kit or a multi-AP305 flash setup. If you felt like you've changed settings by mistake, you can always reset the flash to factory defaults by pressing the power and mode button when the flash is powered off. Remember, you can also download the PDF version of this manual online at alturaphoto.com for more information on how to update the firmware and much more. To jump to your topic on this video, use the index list and time markers found in the description box below. Thanks for watching and we hope this video helps you get more creative with your Altura Photo wireless flash or trigger set. We want to know what you're up to, so please share your photos, questions, and comments with us. I'll catch you in the next video.